Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss the paletot, a double-breasted overcoat that should be part of every man's wardrobe. In detail, we discuss what the paletot is, its history, the characteristics, and how you can wear it well. <laughs> If you're a longtime reader of the Gentleman's Gazette, you know that we've dedicated articles to overcoats, and so we decided to add corresponding videos. If you want to check out the old series, head over to our website here. The term paletot is derived from the Roman word pala, which was a Roman greatcoat. Later, the Spanish invented an overcoat called paletoque, which was similar to a frock coat and had vertical seams. During the 18th century, the French developed the word paletot as an umbrella term for all kinds of overcoats and topcoats. In the 19th century, a paletot was an overcoat with some form of waist suppression, sometimes more and sometimes less, but eventually it evolved into a term for any kind of overcoat worn in town. Generally, it was closer fitting to the body than many other overcoats, which meant it could be worn without a jacket or waistcoat underneath. It was sometimes fastened by a fly, and the buttons could reach all the way down to the hem. That's definitely not a style you see anymore today. Generally, a paletot had a flat back that means no belt, no pleats, no folds or vertical seams. Occasionally, you see a gentleman with a paletot with a back slit, but then it was generally quite short. At about the turn of the 20th century, the British considered a paletot to be any kind of fitted, waist-suppressed overcoat or topcoat. The Americans further stipulated that it was about ankle length and it had a flared skirt or bottom. In the 1920s, the Chesterfield overcoat became more popular and it had a single-blasted fly front. To learn more about that garment, please check out the guide here. Around that time, it became more popular to used the word paletot only for double-breasted overcoats, so there was a clear distinction to a Chesterfield which was single-breasted. So when we use the term paletot, we always mean a double-breasted overcoat with some waist suppression and a peak lapel. So what are the hallmarks of a paletot? Typically, you have six buttons in the double-breasted configuration, meaning a 6-2, so you have six buttons, two closing buttons, and the top buttons are typically spaced wider apart. That being said, you can also find paletots that are in a 4-1 button configuration with just four buttons and one closing buttons, but again, the top row of buttons is spaced further apart. Broadly speaking, the paletot resembles the look of the old-school frock coat, which is not really worn anymore today unless you are really into reenactment. Frock coats are technically body coats, so they fit much closer to the body than a paletot, and they have different seams, including vertical seams and buttons in the back. In the 30s, you can sometimes see a paletot with a waist seam in the front, but not in the back. In order to create a fitted silhouette, a paletot always needs side seams or darts that bring in the silhouette on the sides, so it's very flattering in an hourglass shape. The number of pockets on a paletot can vary, but typically you see two flat pockets on either side. Sometimes they're slightly angled for a more debonair or avant-garde look. If any of this terminology in terms of pockets, lapels, buttons, or anything else is new to you, I suggest you check out our guides on suit lingo, which explain all the differences and details. Now, in terms of color choices, a paletot typically comes in darker colors such as navy or gray, but you could also make it in green, yellow, or red. Likewise, the length is not set in stone, and typically everything is considered to be a paletot that is more than knee long and to about ankle length. That being said, in this day and age, it probably looks best to have something that just reaches slightly below the knee. Otherwise, it looks more dated. If you decide to go with a bespoke paletot, you can decide how wide the lapels are, how high the buttoning point is, how big the pockets are, and anything else that you want to have in your overcoat. That being said, one of my favorite features is a contrasting velvet collar, because it really changes the entire look and feel of the overcoat. Velvet sparkles differently in the light, so it's not just the color that sets it apart, but also the texture of the fabric. So why do we think every man should have a paletot in their wardrobe? Basically, 
It is a simple overcoat and if you have it in a dark navy color, you can wear it to any kind of business event. You can wear it for a funeral as well as weddings or black tie or even white tie events. Yes, it's navy, not quite black, but in an evening setting, it works just fine. And it's just one coat that has the widest use case scenario. So if you don't have a lot of money for overcoats, I suggest you invest in a pallet who first, because you can wear it all the way from very formal occasions down to more casual occasions. In a plain color, it works with all kinds of pattern suits, such as houndstooth, small checks, as well as pinstripes. On the flip side, if you wear a lot of solid suits, I suggest you invest in a slightly textured paletot, such as this one here, which contains colors of gray, black, and blue in a very small pattern. So from afar, it looks more like a solid gray overcoat, but if you come up closer, you'll see that it's slightly different and it sets off the solid plain texture of your suits. That being said, I could also wear this on top of a stroller suit, for example, or a morning coat ensemble. One way to even enhance the use case scenario of your navy paletot is to add a detachable fur collar because that way it's even more evening appropriate and it keeps you a lot warmer even during very cold winters. If you add a fur collar to any overcoat, including a paletot, you really change the look dramatically and it almost looks like an entirely new garment. Because the paletot is double-breasted, you get two layers in front of your chest, which keeps you warmer in the winter. If you wear a lot of classic casual garments, such as cardigans or maybe tweed coats, I suggest to go with a paletot with a textured fabric because that way it can be easily worn with any kind of tweed coat. The paletot today still has a plain back, which is owed to the town heritage. Overall, it's a very classic, simple and sophisticated overcoat that will never disappoint. Especially if you're starting out, I think it's a great choice and you can always add coarser tweedy overcoats later on. But in the beginning, it makes sense to have one overcoat that works for you on many occasions. For example, here I'm pairing a paletot with a classic pinstripe suit in navy and black oxfords. Alternatively, I could also wear it with a gray flannel suit or a Glencheck flannel suit. Of course, I could also wear it with a gray tweed suit, maybe green slacks or chinos. It goes without saying that any type of gray suit or blue suit would work well with this overcoat as well because it has the colors of blue, black and gray incorporated into the fabric. To keep it more muted, you'd wear it with black gloves such as these ones from Fort Belvedere with contrasting red elements that pick up the color of my scarf. Alternatively, you could go with gray gloves that are in a lighter gray in Land Napa or maybe something in Peccary. Or you could maybe opt for something in burgundy or chamois yellow that's just a little bolder. Likewise, I think a pair of green gloves could also look great with this overcoat. In terms of scarves, the sky really is the limit here. You could wear it with a herringbone scarf in either yellow or orange. I picked a double-sided scarf with a silk wool blend that has micro patterns printed on it, but it could also work with paisleys. And because you have this kind of dark background, lighter colors work really well in scarves. Of course, I could also wear a lighter silk scarf, for example, and maybe a black fedora or a gray fedora that picks up the colors in the overcoat. Back in the day, a snap rim hat wouldn't have been quite the right hat for town wear. Instead, people would have worn Hamburg hats. Today, though, if you wear a hat, you're already more formally dressed than 99.9% .9 of the other people out there, so it works together. In conclusion, the paletot is a very versatile overcoat that has stood the test of time and you will be able to wear it many years from now without any alterations or changes. On top of that, it can be combined with most everything from formal wear down to casual wear and you will always cut a good figure in it. Typically made of wool or cashmere or blends thereof, it usually keeps you warm, especially because it has double layers over your chest area. What do you think of the paletot coat and what items would you wear with it? Please share with us in the comments below. 
And if you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and check out our other series about overcoats in the winter, as well as suits and anything else pertaining to classic men's wardrobe. In today's video, I'm wearing the classic overcoat shape with a black velvet collar and a thicker wool fabric in black, gray, and blue. It was made by Chester Berry in England, and I found it vintage for about $100. All I had to do was to let the sleeves out because it was originally too short. I fed this overcoat for about eight years and it served me very well. Here I combined it with a double-breasted pinstripe suit from Ralph Lauren in navy and I have black oxfords with a half-broken capto medallion and my tie is yellow and because of that I picked yellow and navy socks, so they tie the shoes together with the pants as well as the tie. For my gloves, I opted for the black peccary gloves from Fort Belvedere, which are cashmere lined and have red accent stitching and colors in between the fingers, so it works well with my black velvet collar as well as the fabric and the kind of burgundy scarf I'm wearing here. You can find the scarf, the socks, and the gloves in our shop here. Thank <laughs> you.